All right, so, uh, so about 18 years ago, I was working for an architecture firm in Norfolk, Virginia, and we had a client come in one day. So this guy comes in, he has the Birkenstocks, he has the ponytail, he's telling me every 15 minutes he's a vegan or a vegetarian, I can't remember which one it was. <clears throat> but uh, he wanted us to design a building for them up in Caribou, Maine, and he wanted us to design it around this, uh, this pilot program at the time, LEAD, Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. It was this new criteria at the time that the U.S. Green Building Council had come out with. And so I got involved with that, worked on the design of that, and then before that, that building went into uh, construction, I went to work for Virginia Beach City Public Schools. And so the school division had been building this uh, prototype elementary school all around the city for a number of years. And so we talked about maybe we can tweak this prototype and we can get a LEED certification with it. And so Tony Arnold was the director of facilities at the time. He said, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do that. So we, we did that, and there was very little drama with that, you know, and so that ended up being the first uh, lead elementary school in the state of Virginia, but, uh, but at the same time, also, right before that opened, I got called back on active duty. So I'm on active duty for about 16 months. I come back, and I come back into the office, and I asked Tony, I said, how's the stuff going with the lead projects? Because they'd started three or four new schools since, uh, since I was gone, and he wouldn't make eye contact with me. You know, he's looking at the floor, he's looking at the ceiling. He said, ah, we really haven't done anything with it. So we talked about, let's come up with a more formal plan for how we're going to address this. So we came up with these three goals. One is to uh, build this sustainable building infrastructure. Uh, second goal of how do you integrate sustainability practices throughout the school division. And then the third goal of how do you educate the public about sustainability. So on the building side of it, which is really the foundation for everything we do, uh, we started pursuing LEED with all of our new buildings. So we have about eight LEED projects that range from a basic certification to a platinum certification. Right now, we have a ninth uh, LEED project, which is in construction, and that'll open in the fall. And then we have a uh, tenth, which is in design, and eleventh and twelfth, which are getting ready to go out on the streets. So we'll have close to two million dollar or two million square feet of LEED building space. So that's how we're addressing our, our, new, uh, our new buildings. But with the existing buildings, we're going for performance contracting, where we replace lighting, HVAC, and then we're also pursuing Energy Star with those buildings. And then when you move into that second goal of how do you integrate these practices throughout the school division, we decided to uh, assemble a group of representatives from all the different departments within the school division, and we formed this Sustainable School Committee. And so what we do is we talked about things that we wanted them to integrate into their departments, and we started moving forward with that. And then this third goal of how do you educate the public? Well, that was the main thing that we were all trying to achieve. We were just trying to get our own house in order before we started talking to students about what we would like for them to do out in the school. So what we did was we identified these uh, sustainable school liaisons at each school. You know, every school has someone who's passionate about these types of things. We wanted to identify that person, and we didn't want to create any work for them. So we did that. It took a number of years to kind of work through that. We started that process sometime in 2006, and a lot of times I'd send out these emails to schools, and uh, someone would say, why are you sending me this email where your principal identified you as a sustainable school liaison? So it took us a few years to shake all that out. So, so now we have, this, we have this really good framework that we've, that we've built upon. And uh, we are, what's kind of unique about our area is we're the, uh, according to a study that came out last year, we're the third most conservative city in the country in Virginia Beach. And so if you're looking at populations with cities over 250,000 people. But we're also recognized as having one of the greenest school divisions in the country. And people typically don't put those two things together. And so we've been very successful because since 2006, we've grown as a school division, square footage-wise, by about 9%. We have about 10.5 million square feet of building space right now. But we've reduced our energy consumption by 24%. So we're building these buildings, and we're building these lead buildings for less than everybody else is building a traditional school in our region as well. So the uh, school planning and management every year, they put out the average square foot cost for an elementary, middle, and high school. They do this around the country. There's 12 regions around the country. We're region three. So every time we build one of these buildings, we look and see how we compare with the regional average in our area. And we've built all of these lead buildings for less than the regional average, so it's kind of a no-brainer. So we're in an area that's very conservative, but if you're a fiscal conservative and you see what we're doing, you have to kind of embrace that. So these new buildings have the, you know, we're capturing rainwater and flush toilets. We have 
solar hot water, we have some photovoltaics, we have a lot of natural interesting daylight systems that are going on. So we have all of this unique stuff in place. But we really just kind of scratched the surface. So the next phase of what we're trying to do is change the culture of the school division. So when we talk about sustainability in Virginia Beach, it's always been that kind of definition of uh, meeting the needs of the present without compromising the abu ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And you know, the, the more I looked at that over time, we're just really doing a lousy job of that. You know, we're definitely compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs with all this stuff that, that goes on. So we lean more in the direction of this triple bottom line model that, uh, that was developed in the 90s by uh, John Elkington, a Brit, came up with this idea of the triple bottom line. Let's look at social, economic, and environmental issues when we measure our bottom line. So when we talk to students, that's what we talk about, that social, economic, environmental outcome. Because when you think about it, every time you get up in the morning, from the time you turn on the light, you brush your teeth, uh, the, the clothes you wear, the food you eat, the way you get from point A to point B, you impact these three things, social, economic, environmental impacts. And so what we want to do is we want to engage students in that conversation. We want them all to be thinking about these things. And when you start engaging students in those three things in the classroom, then it gives us an opportunity to talk about uh, equity and inclusion and empathy. We start to have all these discussions that are big things in K through 12 education. And I kind of had an aha moment about empathy uh, maybe three or four years ago. I'm flipping through the channels and I come across this advertisement for a popular TV show. They're having an immunity challenge on there. And so the immunity challenge is the contestants have their hands tied behind their back. Uh, they've roasted a pig or a goat or something on a spit. And what they have to do is they have to pull the meat off and spit it into a bucket. And the first person to fill the bucket, they win the challenge. And that's when it dawned on me that, uh, you know, that's really why it's so hard for this whole sustainability thing to take hold. And it's because we kind of see everything on the food chain below us as insignificant. And so we have a very tough time as a culture uh, kind of understanding the interconnectedness and interdependencies of systems. And so when we start talking about these three things, it's a much better way for us to kind of engage students in that dialogue. And so Leith Sharp for the last 12 years has taught this course in Harvard about change leadership uh, for sustainability. And she has Fortune 500 people from around the world come in, executives, and they take this course to kind of understand how to make a cultural change within their organization. And so uh, I've had the opportunity to work with Leith a couple of times. And now we're going to, this summer, we're going to bring Leith down. And we're going to sit all of our executive leadership team uh, into a room for a day and a half. We're going to kind of lock them in there with uh, Leith and her band of misfits who are going to kind of program them about how do you make this cultural change around sustainability within your school division. And so what we want to come up with is we want to have all these different department heads, whether it's, uh, you know, food services or transportation or finance. And we want to develop these uh, operational and instructional outcomes. And so what we want to do is we want to kind of turn everybody in the school division into a knowledgeable educator about this triple bottom line process. We want them to all understand the triple bottom line process. We want them to embrace it. But we want to take a guy who goes out and typically uh, goes from school plant and he paints a wall in a, in a classroom to being an educator. You know, so there should be a little sign on his card that says, ask me why I'm using a low VOC paint. You know, or if the guy's changing a light bulb, ask me why we're modifying these from T12s to T5s, we're putting in LEDs, and so they can start to answer questions. But we want to change them all into educators, and we want to get more buy-in from them, because you'll see, we've been doing this, uh, you know, we've been, we've been doing this stuff for about 14 years in our school division, and you can see it's still very tough for that crusty old guy who's been in the system for 30 or 40 years to embrace this. And so this will be a big step for us to try and figure out how we move the entire school division into this mindset, which is exciting to me. And we have a, uh, a superintendent, a young superintendent, Dr. Aaron Spence, who's been there uh, for uh, going on two years now, and he's embracing these concepts as well. And so what we want to do is we want to become that model for other school divisions across the country. So our, our big idea is how do you affect culture change but not just within uh, our organization, but how do you do that globally? 
So when I was in the military, one of the things that I did was I was a point man. And as a point man, you're constantly looking near mid far, near mid far, near mid far field. You know, you're constantly going from this micro to macro environment, uh, assessing your environment. You're responsible for getting people from point A to point B, pacing, you know, route, all of that, but also making sure that the environment's clear that you move through. And so that's the approach that we're going to take with this. If you look locally, if you look at the small near picture, in Virginia Beach, we have 68,000 students. You look to mid-range, that's nationally, we have about 54 million K through 12 students. And if you go globally, there's 700 million K through 12 students. And so we think we can start to affect change. We can be that pebble in the pond. That's what we want to be. We want to, we want to be a model for other school divisions. And so a friend of mine who was in the military with me, he said, you know, people don't, uh, they don't follow the plan, they follow the man. And so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to kind of uh, encourage these other folks to be that man or that woman or that individual who's going to go out there and create those changes. And we want to be that uh, creator for change. So that's what we're doing in Virginia Beach. And that's the end of my little, I cut it short, baby. <clears throat>